Hello and welcome to our session on feature engineering. In this video, we'll uncover how to turn raw data into valuable insights. Think of it as giving your data a makeover to make it more useful for machine learning models. In this video, we'll start with what is feature engineering? Why do we need feature engineering? Then different feature engineering techniques for machine learning? And we will conclude this video after explaining feature engineering process for structured and unstructured data. Before concentrating on feature engineering, let's understand what is feature. Feature is individual measurable property that can represent a specific piece of information about the data. Let's understand using an example. Here we have a sample data set on house prices with related house attributes which has direct or indirect contribution to the pricing. For this data set, every column is individual feature, like number of bedroom is a feature, year of built is another one feature for the data set. Why features are important? Because features are the input that machine learning model used to find correlation during model training and post training the machine learning model uses this feature to predict outcome. That is why the quality and the relevance of features directly affect the accuracy and effectiveness of the ML model. Then what is feature engineering? It's the process of creating new features from existing data to improve model performance. In our sample data set, we have house price. A residential property could be anything, starting from single family house, apartment, condos, and price varies based on the property types. For single family house, total cost is more relevant. However, when it comes to apartment, then total price can't be calculated directly. To advertise the price of apartment, the standard is to provide the price per square feet. There are exceptions to this but the price per square feet is the common standard. That is why we introduced a new feature called cost per square foot from the existing data set. And why do we do that? To make our data more useful and enhance the model's accuracy. There are different feature engineering techniques available. The process of introducing a new feature from existing data set is called feature creation. And the example we took where we created the new feature called price per square feet is the perfect example of feature creation technique. In this example, the raw data was house size and price. We divided house price with house size to create the new feature. The main intention was to relate the house price with house size for all different types of residential properties. The next technique is feature transformation. In our sample data set, we have an existing feature called year of built. Year of built has direct relation with house price. However, for the machine learning model, it can be confusing and the ML model may not be able to relate the year of built with house price. That is why we can introduce house age. That means we can take our raw data, year of built, and transform it to house of age. Using feature transformation, we can provide more intuitive understanding of the house's age, which can impact its price. Next technique is feature selection. In our sample level data set, we have features like location, number of bedroom, year of built, cost per square feet, and others. However, features like number of bedroom may not carry significance in terms of defining house price. And we can eliminate those features which seems not relevant or ambiguous in our test dataset. Using feature selection, we choose the most relevant features using techniques like correlation analysis and feature importance. Other feature engineering techniques are scaling and encoding, and exploratory data analysis. Let's understand scaling first. 
in our sample data set house price varies widely the lowest value is 50k whereas the highest value is 800k as the pricing range varies in the test data set the lower range values may have less significance than higher range values during the model training to bridge this gap we need to bring all the data set in a standard range and this standardization is called scaling this will ensure all the data points will contribute equally during model training mean max scaling is one of the techniques we can use to normalize the house prices in the range of 0 to 1 this will eliminate the value divergence we can use this formula where we can take every price then subtract the minimum value and then divide the value range that is the difference of max and minimum value in the price range if we apply this mean max scaling to all the prices then the result will come as follows you can pause the video and apply the formula for every price to validate the values 50k turns to 0 300k turns to 0.33 600k turns to 0.73 and so on since the prices are normalized and with a smaller divergence all the values will get equal weightage during the model training next let's review encoding let's assume our sample data set has a feature called house type and the values are detached semi detached terraced and so on since these are non numerical values it may pose some ambiguity to the machine learning model during model training to resolve this problem we can use encoding technique to convert the text data to a numerical representation one hot encoding is one of the techniques that we can apply on top of the raw data to convert the house types to binary vector as an example detached will turn to 100 semi detached as 010 and terraced to 001 you can consider these vectors as coordinates or data points in a 3d diagram in actual machine learning model it's a multi dimensional representation to identify the syntactical meaning of the text the main purpose is using encoding we can convert the house types into binary vectors which will help the model understand the syntactical similarities next we will review exploratory data analysis in this technique we analyze and visualize the data understanding the data structure pattern and relationship is very important while preparing the test data set to dive deep let's assume we have the sample data set of house prices based on location and house sizes if we pay close attention we can identify that the second row from the bottom is an outlier and the cost per square feet value is not in line with rest of the data set finding this outlier was easy for this example because we have only handful of rows however for actual test data when we have a huge volume maybe thousands of row it's not possible to identify the outlier without any visualization tool exploratory data analysis addresses this challenge the first step in the process is to represent the data graphically using visualizations like histogram scatter plot or box plot to analyze patterns and trends here are some examples of histograms and scatter plots Since our sample data set is very small I'll represent the data using a bar chart even at first glance it's clear that one data point is significantly different from the rest of the data set after creating histogram and scatter plots we use statistical methods like correlation analysis to understand the relationship between the variables and assess their strength using these graphical methods we can also detect any outliers in the data set if we train our model with those outliers it may negatively impact model performance once we detect outlier or irrelevant data 
we can take appropriate steps to either eliminate the data or correct the values. In summary, the main purpose of exploratory data analysis is to identify important features and address any data issues before training the machine learning model with test data. So far, we have discussed feature engineering for structured data, where data is organized in a predefined schema. However, when it comes to feature engineering for unstructured data, the methods vary widely. Unstructured data includes formats like text, image file, audio file, video file, and more. The main challenge with unstructured data is that it cannot be organized in a predefined structure or tabular format. Let's explore with a real life example. Imagine we want to perform sentiment analysis on e-commerce product review. Our data set would consist of customer reviews, which may include only text or a combination of text and images. Here is an actual customer review for a branded headphone from Amazon.com. I have also copied the plain text from the review below. The first step in feature engineering for unstructured text data is tokenization. Tokenization splits sentences into words or phrases. Here's the tokenization output of the review text. Each token is represented in a different color and even punctuation marks like commas and periods are considered as token. In our input customer review text, words like love, the, and sound are now separate tokens. Once we have the tokens, we can apply TFIDF, which stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency. TFIDF helps measure the frequency and relevance or importance of each word in a sentence. Here's the TFIDF output for our review text. In the output, you will see a numerical value or TFIDF score assigned to each word or token. The score represents the importance of each word in the sentence. Higher scores indicates more important word, while lower scores indicate less importance. For instance, in the product review, the word amazing reflecting the customer sentiment has highest score. By converting text data to a numerical value, it becomes easier for the model to understand the data and identify the importance or relevance of each word. Customer review can also include images or product. For image data, we can apply techniques like age detection to identify ages within the image or color histogram to analyze the color distribution within the image. That wraps up this module. I hope this session helped you gain a deeper understanding and brought you one step closer to your learning goals. Thank you very much for watching and learning with us at Cloud Expert Solution. If you found this video helpful, Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more update and feel free to drop any question or feedback in the comments. We would love to hear from you. See you in the next module.